Welcome to r slash pro revenge where OP gets her sexist teacher fired. It was the early 1990s and I worked for a telemarketing company with the initials SMC in Logan, Utah. I was employed for two full days when I came to the conclusion that we were just scamming old people out of their money using grossly unethical methods. I quit after my second day of work and when I received my paycheck, I noticed that I was paid minimum wage instead of the $10 per hour I was promised when they hired me, so I went back to complain. The office manager told me, you didn't finish the 90 day probationary period, so you only get minimum wage. BS. They never said anything about a probationary period in training and I know it wasn't in the contract I signed upon hire. Yeah, I actually read it before signing it. As the manager opened the door to have me leave, he said, See ya, wouldn't wanna be ya. I was fuming. I called the city offices and discovered that SMC didn't have a business license and reported them. Less than an hour later, I watched as the police showed up and told them they would have to shut down operations until they had a business license. It took them two weeks. When they were back in business, I used an elaborate scheme to get myself on their call list and recorded several of their employees' efforts to sell me junk. It was Utah and legal to record calls. I knew that what they were doing wasn't just unethical, it was illegal. Not only did I report it to a local news station who had their consumer reporter do a two-part story on the scummy company, but I also reported them to the FBI. The owner of the company was one of the 200 plus people that was arrested by the FBI in a nationwide sting of dishonest telemarketing companies. The FBI called it Operation Disconnect. See ya, wouldn't wanna be ya, ha. I don't know what minimum wage was in Utah at the time, but I'm guessing probably like seven or eight bucks. So for like a nine hour workday over two days, that's 18 hours multiplied by two or three dollars difference is about 30 to $50. So this guy screwed OP out of let's say 50 bucks maybe. And because of this, OP shut down his business and got him arrested by the FBI. Talk about pro revenge. Our next Reddit post is from JakeXDX. Years ago, shortly after I moved out, my dad decided he wanted to remodel his bathroom and hired a local contractor who I'll refer to as DB. DB had fixed a clogged sink for him once. From the start, my dad was extremely skeptical of contractors and didn't want to get scammed. So after they agreed on the price for labor, my dad asked him for an invoice for the cost of all the materials. He took the invoice to one of his coworkers whose brother-in-law was a plumber or in construction or something to look over the list of materials to see if the quote was fair. And right off the bat, DB was trying to do close to a 50% markup on the materials. So instead of paying DB's invoice, my dad just bought all the materials himself saying he knows a guy who gives him amazing discounts. So DB couldn't get suspicious that my dad was onto his game. After three months, the bathroom isn't close to being done, despite DB telling him it would take two months. My dad had to travel for work and would be gone a week, so he asked me to house it and make sure DB shows up to work and doesn't steal stuff. Right off the bat, DB tries to be all buddy-buddy with me, but I didn't like the guy and just brushed him off, asking how the bathroom was coming. Over the course of the week, DB tried to upsell me on a bunch of things he said needed to be done to finish the bathroom. Most of it was electrical work, which he didn't have a license for. My dad filled me in before he left about what was quoted in the labor and there was no electrical work quoted. And I told him no, just stick to the original quote. Once my dad comes back, I filled him in on all the additional charges DB tried to tack on. He also didn't show up for three days, saying he hurt his shoulder tripping over his cat. Then he tried to install a new ceiling light, which he was not asked to install because we had an electrician coming in to install it. After a heated discussion between DB and I, he stopped installing the ceiling light and started laying tile, during which he broke a quarter of the tiles. After this debacle, my dad did some investigating and looked up DB's license and found out that not only was the license expired, it didn't even belong to DB. So my dad asked my brother and I to come over when he was going to confront DB about lying about his license. A very heated argument broke out when my dad refused to let DB enter the house to collect his tool and said we would bring the tools out to him. DB then threatened to press charges against me for assault when I accidentally brushed his shoulder when I was passing him in the hallway and I refused to apologize. 
After the cops showed up, DB quickly tried to play the victim, but the cops told DB to collect his tools and leave. The bathroom's still unfinished, but my dad didn't have to pay DB for his three months of labor and use that money to hire real contractors to finish the bathroom. It only took them a week and a half to finish. After this, my dad contacted the local news to tell them about DB being a con man. A few months later, the news did an investigation story about him and they found other people DB scammed. Where DB would start to work on their bathroom, but once he got paid, he would cut and run, leaving the bathroom unfinished and stealing all the materials. The news then set up a sting for DB and exposed him for being a con man and he was arrested not long after the news story aired. Our next Reddit post is from HS. I went to a ghetto high school in a poor community, but my parents raised me to work my butt off so I could get out of there. My parents never went to college, but because of this, myself and my siblings have all gone to good schools out of state. I maintained a 4.0 until the year in question in high school, taking five advanced courses a year out of six total, with the last six not offering an honors alternative. I learned to get very little sleep because of the amount of work these courses required, and because my school didn't have tutoring aids or anything of the like. Didn't understand something? Tough cookies, get to googling. So in one of my upperclassmen years, I signed up for an advanced chemistry course. I knew it would be hard, but assumed like the rest of my courses that if the class was minimally structured and Google came through per usual, I'd be fine. Other students warned me not to take the course, but since I wanted to go to college for chemistry, I knew I had to go through with it. The teacher was horrible. He was old, which is fine, and didn't offer after-class support, which was normal, but also didn't even offer in-class support. His answer to even basic questions was, you should understand that, talk to me about it later, but later never came. He didn't offer lunch hours, didn't offer after school hours, and in class would just put up the answers which were already available online and in the back of the book. My family didn't have fancy tutor money and none were readily available in my community anyways. I studied my butt off, but when the first test came back, I had a D minus, with no notes to even understand what I'd done wrong. When I went to speak with him about it right after class ended, missing part of my next course in the process, he simply told me to look more closely at the textbook for help, and that he didn't have time for me. He was two weeks behind the explanations that he did give because he was constantly distracted. All of this is bad, but didn't deserve him being fired, yet. What did was when he got dangerous. In an experiment working with hydrochloric acid, a plug held the concentrated stuff in a tube with some magnesium and reacted to form hydrogen bubbles. Well, one of the other students in my group didn't plug the thing properly and the plug fell out, with the magnesium being stuck in the tube now without the hydrochloric acid. So I asked him how to get the tube back, expecting him to tell us to discard the hydrochloric solution, rinse with water, and start over. I'd read the safety section in my textbook, which had this approach to working with acids. His response? He insisted that I stick my ungloved hand in the solution and just grab the plug and then, still in the solution, plug it back in. He wouldn't even put his own hand in to do it, so my high school self thought this was an inherently bad idea. I took some more magnesium from the workbench and kept adding it to the solution until it stopped reacting, eating up all the hydrochloric acid to just leave water. And it kept getting worse. One day, he brought what he claimed were illegal fireworks into the classroom and started setting them off. He thought it was funny to point them at us, wearing no safety equipment or goggles and hoodies that could have easily caught the fiery things. He frequently would leave the room while a group of high school kids were playing with Bunsen burners and caustic chemicals. So, in combination with the total lack of education I was getting, I didn't feel safe. Oh, and did I mention he was sexist too? I'm a girl, by the way. All of the boys got A's on tests, with no explanations. He even lost one of the other boys' tests and straight up said in front of me and the rest of the class that we would just give him an A-, assuming that he had done well. Later on, I asked the other student for help understanding something, and even he didn't know what was going on in the course. So I knew it was just BS. Every other girl I asked was getting the same inexplicable grades as I was. This wasn't unusual on its own either, as I lived in a very conservative area and had several sexist teachers. Just usually, they'd at least still grade fairly. 
The last contextual thing, my high school teachers union has negotiated for tenure. After coming to college, I've learned that this is a very unusual thing. And in retrospect, it's an idiotic thing. This chemistry teacher was tenured, which meant that there was basically no way to fire him. Honestly, I felt bad for the bitter old man because after a botched surgery, he was constantly in pain. He was still teaching because he refused to retire and he had his son go through college that he needed to pay for. But at a certain point, this was affecting my chances of getting into college. I wasn't about to let one man's issues affect prospects for the rest of my life. So I looked up recording laws from my state and found that it was a one-party consent state, meaning that I could legally record audio of my teacher as long as the campus didn't say anything against it. They had no policies, and I was one of the parties consenting. So for a month, with my grade tanking, despite hours of studying and three study books on the course, I recorded him. I recorded his fireworks, his lambasting female students, his crying in the back chemical storage room, leaving us unsupervised. I recorded the three times he'd left campus inexplicably, leaving the front office to send a last minute substitute to open the door and let us in. You know the 15 minutes and I'm legally allowed to leave meme? That was a constant joke for my class. And then, I made a throwaway Gmail to make a throwaway Dropbox account, which was big at the time. I uploaded everything and emailed it to my superintendent with the ultimatum that if something wasn't done, I would email the recordings to the local news and that I really didn't want to do that. Within a day, I heard back, with her assuring me that I wouldn't be punished for ratting him out. My parents, her, and myself met. We went over my grades, my unmarked tests and homework, and the videos. They asked me first to talk over my concerns with the teacher, and I said I was uncomfortable with that given his treatment of female students. The superintendent said she wouldn't tell the teacher who had submitted the evidence, but that they needed to speak with him about the concerns to hear his side of the story. My parents and I said that was completely reasonable as long as my name was never mentioned. The next day, the teacher said he needed to speak with me after class alone. I told him I couldn't as I had another course after that, and he said that it was important. I turned on my phone's recorder again right before the class ended, and as I was packing up, he approached me. Due to the shape of the classroom, I was literally backed into a corner and would have had to push this man to the side to get out. He then started saying that one of the students in the course had brought unfounded concerns and lies to the administration about what was going on in the course, and that he knew we hadn't always gotten along well, but that he hoped I wouldn't have done that to him. I lied through my teeth and said that I didn't know what he was talking about, that he was making me uncomfortable by blocking my access to the door, and that I was late for my next class. He didn't even deny what I was saying, just said that since I clearly had a problem with him, he'd be willing to stay after class to help me specifically, since it seemed like I was struggling so much. After that, I told him I really needed to get to my next course and he finally moved. I emailed the superintendent that recording during my next course and CC'd my parents. My parents were furious. The superintendent was mad too because while my parents were poor, they dressed up nicely. My mom was an expert in bluffing about getting a lawyer that we totally couldn't afford. So a liability lawsuit was probably ringing through that lady's mind. Since the district couldn't fire him, he was put on immediate permanent medical leave. While the district was still paying his full pay, they gave us one unqualified substitute after another. Two months before the national exam for the course, they gave us a female teacher that they'd pulled out of retirement, but that had actually taught the advanced chemistry course for years. She was a godsend and even held eight hour Saturday classes so that we could catch up with the curriculum at least enough to pass the class. In those two months, we covered just enough of the test material that our class had a 50% pass rate. According to my upperclassmen friends, this was a lot higher than it had been for years, which was less than 10% of class passing. The superintendent also wrote me a thank you college recommendation letter, partially to keep me quiet and partially because they'd been trying to get rid of this guy for years. My little sister took this course a couple of years after me and said that the new teacher was competent and they were still at that 50% pass rate. OP, if you're out there, I will pay you money for those recordings. Man, those, <laughs> those would be pure gold on my channel. I would love to watch those videos. So OP, if you see this, please email me and let's talk. And to everyone else, be sure to subscribe to my channel because if I get my hands on that footage, you're definitely gonna wanna watch that video. Our next Reddit post is from the Accounter L. 
Backstory, I used to work at a marina when I was in high school that sold gas and allowed people to dock for free if they wanted to. Now, one day, a guy comes in on a pretty big boat and gets a lot of gas. Like, $400 worth of gas. He comes to the counter to pay and gives me $400 and $100 bills and I accept them and he goes on his merry way. Fast forward a week or so and I'm told by my boss that the bills he paid in were all counterfeit bills. Unfortunately, as he paid in cash, we had no way of tracking him down. So, we think that he just got away with stealing $400 worth of gas. That is, until this idiot comes back after about a month and a half, thinking he got away with stealing the gas. When he comes back in, I recognize the guy and tell my coworker to call the police right away. However, I knew that this guy would just leave if I let on that I recognized him and we discovered his plot to get free gas. So, I decide to pretend I don't recognize him. Luckily for me, this guy asked to dock the boat for an hour or so on our dock and I tell him it's not a problem. Now, it's policy to get the name and phone number of customers using free dockage, as well as asking that they leave their keys in the boat so that we can move the boat to a different dock if needed. He complies to all the rules and leaves his boat and he leaves his keys with me. After probably about 15 minutes of waiting, the police show up on the dock and ask my boss where the guy is. My boss tells them he just left his boat, but we have his number and can get him to come back to the boat and he then instructs me to do just that. At this point, I was pissed at this dude for making me look dumb for basically losing $400. So I call and tell him, Hey, this is me from the marina. It seems as though there's an issue with your engine and it seems to be smoking. For those that don't know boats that well, engines are very expensive and this one in particular was a 350 horsepower Yamaha engine, which is top of the line so that man got back to the boat in record time. When he got back to the boat, the look on his face when he saw two cops waiting for him was priceless. He tried to play it off and act like he'd done nothing wrong and he didn't know why the police were there but that was short lived as they arrested him and told him why he was being arrested. <laughs> Turns out the guy had almost two grand in counterfeit $100 bills on him. Then MGO Samer down in the comments provides some context on how stupid this guy is. Passing counterfeit bills can be among the dumbest things you can do. Let's say you do it and you make a few stops and get away with it. Great, right? No, because banks are required to call the treasury department and they take a very keen interest in any reported counterfeiting. They'll send agents out because they don't know if someone just cooked up a few bills or if there is a serious operation going on. And so they'll go to each location and eventually they'll find the person. From what I understand, making good enough counterfeiting bills is only half the struggle. It's unloading them without getting busted that can be difficult as well. And what's so stupid about this is that this guy is apparently rich enough to afford buying a boat. So he's definitely rich enough to afford 400 bucks in gas. Unless he bought the boat with counterfeit bills as well. <laughs> in which case, he's in a lot of trouble. That was r slash pro revenge and if you like this video please let me know by hitting that like button because it really helps my channel grow.